being in there with my deacons, and uh, we got a lot accomplished, amen, but sometimes it takes longer, so I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, good service this morning, amen? amen? Praise the Lord for that, and I'm so glad to see you back tonight. Let's bow our heads, ask God to bless in the service tonight. Dear Lord, we're grateful for what you've done for us, and we pray, Father, for your blessing to be upon this service tonight. I pray, Father, uh, for our missions conference is coming up. May it be just a, just a wonderful conference. May we see uh, great things accomplished in your name. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. is our theme chorus for our missions conference. We have the words on the screen and we want you to join in singing with us. Laying up treasures in heaven to place at Jesus' feet A soul winner's crown A giver's glad heart Our joyous rewards for doing our part Laying up treasures Souls will not fade away. Heaven and earth someday will be past. What treasures we've laid up will last. And all God's people said, Amen. That's our theme chorus. We'll be singing it the beginning of end and end of every service starting next Sunday. Take your hymnal, number 198. 198 as you're standing, dwelling in Beulah Land. about you.
page 310, 310. You can remain seated or you can stand or you can walk around, but I just want you to sing with us. 310, the lily of the valley, verses 1 and 3. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Of 10,000 to my soul. faith and do his blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. And the he my hungry soul shall fail. Then sweeping up to glory, I'll see his blessed face where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten that's true to you and he's the fairest of 10,000 to your soul would you just say amen? amen amen you may be seated we have a testimony we've enjoyed the testimonies that we've had what's wrong oh okay that's okay oh it's okay You want to go to, you want to take her to my office? Do you see okay? Take her to my office, brother. Grab her, grab her both sides. Take her back to my office. Okay, we'll pray for Sue. Hopefully she'll be okay. We have to. We need to. If we need to call the ambulance to come and get her, we'll take care of that. Okay. Take her back in my office. Set her on, on that couch in there. Brother Phil's going to come give us a word of testimony tonight. We've enjoyed the testimonies from the people here at the church. I, someone told me uh, this week, they said, one of the things I really enjoy about the missions conferences, always we enjoy to hear the testimonies from the different people in the church. And so they said they just enjoy hearing from different characters. And here's a big character right here. Uh, okay. guess I'm a character. Um, well, to me, it's pretty simple. You know, when we studied it this last month, uh, you know, there's only two options. We're either sent or we're a sender. That's all it is. Uh, if we're saved, we either go if God calls us or we help them go. And that's the, that to me is, it, it just makes it easy. And like I've always said in the past, God always gives us the amount to give. And with me, he supplies work. Um, he knows that if he gave me a chunk of change, I'd spend it all. But to me, he gives me extra work. And it's always been that way through the 43 years at the post office. And now I'm working at Lowe's. Uh, started out two days a week, and now I'm working five days a week. And um, God, God invented the millennials so that I would get a lot of work. <laughs> so um, he... Um, he said, how can I get more work for this old guy? And he said, I'll just make these millennials because they don't want to work. <laughs> so um, it, wor it works out good. It works out good. So anyway, that's, that's uh, I, mean, I mean, I like to joke around, but uh, seriously, um, if you pray and mean it in your heart, God will tell you what to give, whether it's a penny or a lot. He will, he will supply, and you don't have to worry about it. It's really easy. 
It's one of the few things we can do that we don't have to worry about because if we listen to him, he's going to give us exactly the right direction. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you. We thank you for the opportunity that you give us to either be called to the mission field or to be a sender to help those. We pray that as we give back to you what you have already given us, it will do it joyfully. It will help expand your kingdom. Many will be saved and uh, the missionaries will be taken care of. We thank you again for all that you do for us and we pray for just a great and exciting mission uh, conference and we ask it all in Jesus name. Amen. special music let's join in singing living for jesus remain, remain seated as we'll sing the first and last verses think of the words of this song
Martha's going to come sing. Okay, we're going to let the children be dismissed to patch the pirate club. And take your Bibles, turn to Revelation chapter 20. Oh, that's a big crew of kids, amen. How's she doing, brother? Okay. Did you give her some water? Okay. Revelation chapter 20, look with me at verses 4 through 6. If you found your place there, if you would stand with me as we read the Word of God tonight. Verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished, this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. The saints of God will reign. I want to speak to you on that subject. The saints of God will reign. Let's bow in prayer. Father, I pray that you would bless the preaching of the word of God tonight. Help us to see that the day is coming when the saints of God will reign. We will reign with you for a thousand years here upon this earth. 
Help us, Father, to prepare for that time. I pray that if there's one here tonight that needs Christ as their Savior, that you would show them their need, convict them. And then, Father, as Christians, help us to live for you and to look forward to that day with great excitement and anticipation. Now bless the preaching of the Word of God, and I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. A man was taking a drive through the country when all of a sudden his car stalled out. He was able to pull the car, a car off to the side of the road. He opened the hood of the car and looked under the hood of the car and to see if he could see any problem. And uh, all of a sudden, this horse came galloping up in the field. And the horse peered over the, the fence and looked straight at the man. The man looked at the horse. And the horse looked at the man. And the horse said, you're probably out of gas. You need to check the gas. The man was startled by the whole thing. He'd never heard a horse talk before. He went running down the street, ran to the first farmhouse that he found, ran up, beat on the door. The farmer came out and said, what in the world's the matter? The man said, you just wouldn't believe what had just happened. He said, I was driving down the road there, and my car stalled out, and I pulled it off the, on the shoulder, and he said, I was looking under the hood, and the horse came up, looked at me, and said, you're probably out of gas. You need to check the gas. He said, I, I just can't believe it. And the farmer said, did he have one floppy ear? He said, yes. He said, well, he said, you can't believe everything that horse says. He doesn't know one thing about cars. That's the whole story. If you're waiting for something else, that's it. <laughs> the point is, he was speaking with authority. <laughs> I know it's terrible. I, that's the way my mind works sometimes. It's just terrible. And I have to live with that all the time. And I'm saying that to say this. One day we will sit upon the throne with the Lord and we will have authority. We're going to see that tonight from this passage of Scripture. The saints of God will reign. Understand up to this point what has happened. Satan will be cast into hell, Hades hell, in the center of the earth. The Antichrist, the false prophet, will be cast into and, uh, and, and uh, Satan along with the fallen angels. And then the Antichrist and the false prophet will be cast into the lake of fire, Gehenna hell, which is beyond the earth. We will come and reign with Christ. Christ will set his kingdom up and establish it, and we will rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In Revelation 19, 16, the Bible says, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of of lords. The Bible says that God will give Christ the kingdom of David in Luke chapter 1 and verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And the Bible tells us that we will rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years here upon this earth. And that's what I want us to look at tonight. The saints will, the saints of God will reign. First of all, look at verse number four. The saints of God will reign on royal thrones. And I saw, verse four, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. 
and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. First of all, the saints will be seated on thrones. Look what he says. John said, I saw and I saw thrones. He sees many thrones, not just one throne, but many thrones. And the saints of God are seated upon those thrones. What is a throne? It's a seat of authority. Amen. It's a seat of authority. That's what it is. That's what he's talking about. Judgment will be given unto us during this uh, millennial kingdom. We will be se seated on the thrones to rule in God's government. This government will be perfect. The government that we have here in America is not perfect. <laughs> we know that. It's not perfect. We love America. Amen? We love America. Praise God for America. But my friend, it is not perfect. But God has made us subject to those in authority over us, hasn't he? Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. If you don't believe me, believe the word of God. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also. For they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. We are in su subjection to those in authority over us, the Bible tells us. God knows that man needs to have authority over him. Otherwise, this world would be in chaos, amen? This country would be in chaos if we did not have leaders. That's why, as Christians, we ought to vote, amen? <laughs> we ought to go out and vote. We need to put conservative people in the leadership role so that it, they don't rob us of our uh, ability to be able to worship God, amen? We need to vote for people who are conservative, so that we can uh, teach and preach the Word of God. Their people, they get in there, they can take away everything from us. My friend, we, don't, we want to continue to be able to worship God, amen? Be able to go out and pass out tracts, read the Word of God, preach the truth from God's Word. We had better vote, amen? <laughs> we had better do it. We'll lose those privileges and rights that we have because uh, there is uh, uh, such conflict in America today. That my friend, if we don't do what we should do, we'll lose everything. We had better uh, use our rights. We had better do that. The saints will be seated on thrones. The saints of God will come from all ages. Look what it says. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. They. So we're talking about lots of people seated upon these thrones. Who are these people seated upon these thrones? They're Old Testament saints. Old Testament saints. Daniel chapter 7, verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all the dominions shall serve and obey him. Old Testament saints are going to reign. The apostles are going to reign. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, unto the apostles he's talking about, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me 
and the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So it'll be the apostles. It'll be the Old Testament saints. It'll be the New Testament saints. We're going to reign during that uh, millennial kingdom in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. Do ye not know what the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? We're going to judge. We're going to rule. We're going to be seated upon thrones, the Bible tells us. Also in 2 Timothy 2.12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If uh, we deny him, he also will deny us. In Revelation 2.26, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. We're going to rule with Christ. And then in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 21, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. So the Old Testament saints, the apostles, the New Testament saints, and then the martyred tribulation saints. Those who were martyred during the tribulation period. Revelation 20 and verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Christ. During the tribulation period, yeah, there'll be people who get saved. My friend, most of them are going to lose their lives. You see that? They're going to be beheaded. They're going to be killed for the cause of Christ. The Bible says, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, this reign will be an earthly reign. It's not going to be a heavenly reign at this time, but eventually we're going to reign with Christ for all eternity. But this reign that we're talking about right, right here will be upon this earth. It will be an earthly reign, not a heavenly reign and not a spiritual reign. Some people take that and say, well, that's just talking spiritually. No, it's not just talking spiritually. It's talking literally in this passage. If you will allow... Now, let me read one verse in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. Notice what it says. And we shall reign on the earth. Revelation 5.10. <laughs> Can't get any simpler than that. It just says it. <laughs> if we will allow Christ to be upon the throne of our hearts today, in that day, I believe we'll have a greater dominion that we're going to rule over. However, if you want to rule your own life today, then in that day you'll have a smaller dominion. <laughs> what is it that you want to rule in that day? What is it that you want to do during that thousand years? A thousand years is a long time. Then for all eternity, it would be good for us to serve the Lord, not just give God the leftovers, amen? <laughs> give God our best. Give Him our best. You know, God only expects us to do what he's given us to do. If you can't sing, he doesn't, you don't have to get up and sing in the choir. You mean I got to sing in the choir? Listen, if you can't sing, you don't have to, you don't have to get up there. You know... God only expect, God's given us gifts to use, amen, in the local church. We need to use those. Use what God has given to you. <laughs> you don't have to do what you can't do, but do what God has given you to do. You know, you know that. You know what God has given you to do. You know what? Do it, amen. <laughs> what, you want me to come to your house, drag you out the door? Just do it. God only expects us to do what he's given us the ability to do. Amen? Just do it. Do it. Use what God has given to you to do. That's all he expects. I, I heard another dumb story. I'll just tell you it's dumb. You don't, have, you, you don't even have to say anything after the service. That, 
how dumb the story is. Well, you don't have to say anything. I already know. <laughs> Fellow received a call from the Humane Society, and they said, you, had, you need to come down here and get your dog. You need to pay the fees and the, uh, the fines and get your dog. The man says, fees and fines? What, what fees and fines? He said, well, the fees are for us taking care of your dog. We've been feeding your dog and watering your dog and caring for your dog. You need to pay the fees. He said, well, what are the fines? He said, well, your dog was caught while he was chasing after someone on his bike. The man said, well, that's not my dog. And the guy says, how come you say it's not your dog? He said, my dog can't ride a bike. I know it. Uh, you know the point that I'm making. God doesn't expect you to do any more than you have the ability to do. Amen? But we need to use what God has given to us. The saints will reign. The saints of God will reign. First of all, the saints of God will reign on royal throne. throne. Secondly, look at this. A lot of people don't understand this second part. And there's a lot of theology here that will help you to understand God's word. The saints of God will reign after the first resurrection. I'm going to explain this to you because a lot of people don't get this. The saints of God will reign after the first resurrection. Look at verses 5 and 6. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. And such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. The first resurrection will include all believers. All believers are part of the first resurrection. Notice several things about the first resurrection. First of all, the participants of the first resurrection. Who are the participants of the first resurrection? Christ, he resurrected. He's part of the first resurrection. The Old Testament saints, the church age saints, the martyred tribulation saints, these are all part of the first resurrection. Resurrection. These are participants of the first resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 22 and 23. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive, but every man in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, after they that are Christ at his coming. Now notice the order of the first resurrection. What is the order of the first resurrection? Christ first. When Christ resurrected, remember, there were the graves opened up of some of the Old Testament saints. So the graves were opened up. Some of them were resurrected at that time. Then secondly, the rapture will take place. All of those who have died in Christ in this church age will be Caught up to heaven. We're going to be, their bodies will be taken out of the ground. Their souls are going to come from heaven. The bodies will be uh, made like that unto the Lord Jesus Christ, new glorified body. We will be caught up together with them, the Bible says, and we'll be given our new glorified bodies. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> together with them. So that's secondly. Thirdly, the Old Testament saints and the martyred tribulation saints are going to be resurrected at the end of the tribulation period, at the beginning of the, of the kingdom age, the millennial kingdom. They will be resurrected to reign with Christ during that millennial kingdom. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 22 and 23, For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man, again, it, it, we've read this passage, in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they there are Christ at his coming. 
The span of the first resurrection started at Easter, about 30 A.D. It will be complete at the setup of the kingdom. The blessedness of the participants of the first resurrection, we will escape the second resurrection. Amen? <laughs> we're not part of the second resurrection. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Then we're going to reign with Christ as priests, the Bible says, for a thousand years. Then notice the second resurrection. The second resurrection will include all unbelievers. All the unbelievers are part of the second resurrection. The participants of the second resurrection, all lost persons of all ages will be part of the second resurrection. The time of the se second resurrection, it'll be at the expiration of the thousand year reign of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24, and also I'll be looking at Revelation 20 and 5. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Revelation 25. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So, those will be raised at the end of the millennial kingdom. They'll be raised and they'll be judged at the great white throne judgment cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Everyone will be part of the first resurrection or the second resurrection. The saved are part of the first resurrection. The unsaved are part of the second resurrection. Which part? Which resurrection will you be part of? The first or the second? I hope the first. I'm praying for the first. You must be a saint of God to be part of the first resurrection. That's by trusting Jesus Christ as their Savior. We, they sing that song, When the Saints Go Marching In. We're not marching in, we're flying in, amen? We're flying in. They were two brothers, they were scoundrels in a small town. The older brother died. The younger brother wanted to have a funeral for his older brother, who's a real scoundrel. Both of them were scoundrels. And... He had a hard time finding any preacher to do his funeral. Finally found a preacher that would do his funeral. He's gonna, he said, I'll pay you a, a great deal to do the funeral for my brother. And then he said, I'm, I'll even pay you more money if during the funeral you will call him a saint. He said, I'll pay you well if you will call him a saint. And the preacher agreed to do that. Mm, yeah. Well, they had the funeral. And during the funeral, the pastor preached the funeral message. And at the end of the funeral message, he says, And this brother was a real scoundrel. But in comparison to his younger brother, he was a saint. You have to be a saint, amen? You have to know Christ as your Savior to be part of the first resurrection. The saints, will, the saints of God will reign. The saints of God will reign on royal thrones. The saints of God will reign after the first resurrection. And the saints of God will reign rapturously. <laughs> rapturously. Look at verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. The saints of God will reign rapturously because the second death has no power over them. He said, blessed and holy. And then he says, and, and the second death hath no power. The second death. What is the second death? We're talking about eternal hell fire. Amen. That's what the second death is. Eternal hell fire. The lake of fire. No child of God will ever face God's eternal wrath. Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood 
we shall be saved from the wrath through him. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 10. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Chapter 5 and verse 9. For God hath appointed unto us wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, as Christians, we have less to worry about than the unsaved world. Amen? <laughs> we don't have to worry about the second death. We don't have to worry about that. We don't. We know that we're headed for heaven. We're looking forward to heaven. I was talking, I was witnessing to a guy one day, and I mentioned hell. And the guy said to me, he said, that scares me. You shouldn't scare me like that. I said, well, I'd rather scare you into heaven than ease you down into hell. Right, it scares them. Most preachers have quit preaching about hell today. They don't want to preach about it. I mean, in all the books, I, I have them back there. They're teaching the modern-day preachers not to preach negatively. Don't talk about hell. I've got it back there. Barna's books. I've got, I've got a whole bunch of these books. Tell you, tell the young preachers how to preach. Don't preach negatively because you'll scare people off. Well, I'd rather scare people into heaven than ease them down into hell. Amen? But they're doing it. It's all positive preaching. And they're sending people to hell. They're getting a big crowd of people. But you know, it's not about getting a big crowd of people, is it? It's about preaching the Word of God. It's about preaching the truth. I had a man come here this morning. He said, I've come here... To hear the truth. <laughs> I said, well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to preach the truth to you. I'm going to preach it right from the Bible. The saints of God will reign rapturously because the second death has no power over them. The saints of God will reign rapturously because they will be priests. Look at verse 6. And, shall, and they shall be priests of God and of Christ. We're already... If you're saved here tonight, you're already part of the royal, uh, uh, the royal priesthood of God. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, the Bible says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. I, I knew that already. <laughs> that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. As the part of the priesthood of believers, we're to show people the light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? We don't sit around in robes, but my friend, we go out and we proclaim the light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we're a royal priesthood, the Bible says. We're to serve as priests. But in the... Did you get that? During the, uh, the millennial kingdom, we're going to be priests still. Amen? And our job is still the same. We're to worship God. We're to point men to the knowledge of Him and to point them to the light. Because during the millennial kingdom, there will be people uh, saved in the tribulation period that will go into the millennial kingdom, and they will have naturally born children, and those children are going to have to be converted. Amen? And you know what? You would think that everyone would get converted, wouldn't you? You would think that everyone would get saved with Christ ruling as the king of the universe. You would think, but it's not going to be that way. And you're going to see something at the end of the millennial kingdom. For a season, Satan will be released, and he's going to gather an army one more time to fight against Christ. There are going to be people that will fight against Christ after a thousand years of Christ reigning. If you don't think natural man is wicked, my friend, then you're mistaken, amen? Because it will be all natural man, amen? Carnal, natural man, because the devil that whole time is going to be in hell. That shows you that old nature of yours, you better be careful. <laughs> you better have it guarded. You say, how can this person do that? Or how can they do and my friend... You can do anything, amen? I, that, na that old nature is wicked and sinful. Yes, we're going to point people to Christ. Then the saints will reign rapturously because they will reign with Christ a thousand years. Look at verse 6. And shall reign with him a thousand 
years. Politically, it will be universal, a universal reign. Psalm chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare and decree, the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. It will be universal. See that? The uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. It will be universal. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 35. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like a chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. It will be politically, it will be a universal reign. Spiritually, we will reign, the Gentiles will reign with the Jews. How about that? We'll worship the king together. Physically, our reign will be at the time that the curse will be lifted. We'll be able to see what this world was like before Adam and Eve sinned. The curse will be lifted. Isn't that something? We're going to get to see that. Isaiah 11, verses 7 through 9. And the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones, shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like an ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. I don't even like snakes. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my uh, holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Boy, isn't that what we've been looking for? We've been waiting for. It'll be worth it all in that day. It'll be worth it all in that day. We're looking forward to it. Father took his little girl to the hospital to see her new baby brother went into the room mother was laying in the bed had the baby there in the bed with her little girl looked at the baby the baby had you know they put those little tags on the hand of the baby little girl looked at it she looked at her daddy she said daddy when are they going to take the price tag off that baby <laughs> you know what they never take the price tag off that baby that baby will cost for the rest of her life. But you know what? It's worth it, amen. <laughs> it's worth it. My daughter, Darcy, called today with Sevilla. I, I was sitting there in, in my chair, and all of a sudden my phone just, this is the first time ever, it, it just... Uh, there was a picture of Sevilla on there. I've never used that function of the phone. I don't even know how it happened. But there was my little granddaughter staring, looking at me, and I looked down there at the corner, and, she, and, and my face is on there too. Kind of scared me for a moment there. You know? But what a joy, isn't it? I thought to myself, it's worth it. It's worth it, isn't it? To spend that money on those children. It's worth it. It'll be worth it all when we see Jesus. Amen. It'll be worth it all when we see him. The saints of God will reign. Listen, folks, all that we go through in this life, it'll be worth it all with just one glimpse of Christ. All the suffering, all the difficulties, all the problems. When we see Christ, it'll be worth it all. Let's bow our heads, every head bowed, every eye closed. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. My first question, it's a very obvious question, you're going to reign with Christ. Or will you be part of the second resurrection? <laughs> 
Are you going to rule with Christ? Are you going to be part of the second resurrection? That's for the unsaved. You'd say, you know, I'm not sure. <laughs> if you're not sure about that, do you need to be sure? You make sure that you're on your way to heaven. You make sure that you're saved. You make sure of that. You say, I'd like to be sure that I'm on my way to heaven. I'd like to be sure. I'd like to be positive of that. Would you pray for me tonight? Would you slip your hand up, put it back down? I'm not sure that I'm on my way to heaven, but I want to be sure. I'm not sure, but I want to be sure. Anyone? The key to serving Christ now and during the millennial kingdom will be faithfulness how faithful are you are you faithfully serving the Lord we need to be faithfully serving the Lord you know what it, it's not what you used to do it's what you're doing we need to finish strong folks we need to finish strong so I used to do that or I used to do this other thing it's not what you used to do but what are you doing now we need to finish strong Finish strong serving the Lord. Finish strong. You say, you know what? I'm not as faithful as I used to be. There's some areas of my life, maybe in reading your Bible, maybe in prayer, maybe in coming to church, maybe in giving, maybe in using your gifts and your talents for God. I mean, you're not as faithful as what you used to be. You say, you know what? I want to finish strong. I want to count for Christ. I want my life to count for Christ. Would you pray for me tonight? Would you pray for me that I would be even more faithful than ever before? I want to count for Christ. Slip your hands up all through the building. I want to count for Christ. Amen. 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 <laughs> Not what you used to do, but what you're doing right now. Let's finish strong. Finish strong. For the cause of Christ. I'm going to pray for you tonight. And I hope that you'll pray. I hope that you'll come tonight and we give the invitation. Come. Come. Kneel here, commit that life to the Lord. We have great opportunities to serve God here at Liberty Baptist Church. There are places that they don't have as many opportunities as we have here. We have great opportunities. There's a place for everyone to serve God here in this place. Let's finish strong for Christ. Dear Lord, be with this invitation tonight. There wasn't anyone that raised their hand that said they weren't sure of salvation. But dear Lord, there may be someone in a crowd this size... There might be someone here. And Father, I pray that you would speak to their heart. And may they come before it's too late. And then, dear Lord, we thank you for the many hands that said, You know what? I want to finish strong for Christ. I want to be more faithful than ever before. Help them to be faithful, Father. Give them strength to be faithful. We're living in, I believe, the last days, the days before your coming. Help us to serve you so that during the millennial kingdom, we'll have a place to serve you in a greater, even a greater capacity in that day. Now, bless in this invitation tonight, and I thank you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet. God spoke in your heart. Why don't you come right now as we begin to sing? Why don't you come?